What's up, vets? Brian Reese here, the VA Claims Insider, coming at you live from my house in Austin, Texas. And uh, man, this is an important topic and something that uh, we get asked about all the time at VA Claims Insider. Uh, And that is compensation and pension exam tips for post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, a lot of vets uh, who have PTSD or thinking about filing a claim for PTSD. All right, maybe you're going to file a claim for the first time. Uh, or maybe you're filing for an increase. Okay, maybe you're underrated right now in your post-traumatic stress disorder rating. You're at 0%, you're at 10%, you're at 30%, you're at 50%, you're at 70%, um, and you think your symptoms are worse. All right, you think that you deserve a higher disability rating, so you're going to file for an increase. Okay, chances are... After you filed your fully developed claim for post-traumatic stress disorder, okay, whether you're filing for the first time or whether you're filing for an increase in your current PTSD rating, okay, chances are very likely you're going to get called in for what's called a compensation and pension exam, okay, also known as a C&P exam. Now, a lot of vets freak out about C&P exams. Um... I get it, guys. I'm a fellow veteran, a disabled veteran, and I sympathize with you. Uh, And the reason I sympathize with you is because some of these C&P examiners absolutely suck. It makes me so angry. All right, you want to talk about what gets Brian Reese fired up? All right, something that sets my PTSD off uh, is some of this garbage C&P exam results I'm seeing. uh, And the worst are the VA doctors, all right? If you're a VA psychologist or a VA psychiatrist and you do C&P exams, I'm calling you out because you suck, okay? And you are not doing legal, moral, ethical exams, okay? You're doing illegal, immoral, and unethical exams, and I'm calling you out, and we are challenging you. We are encouraging our veterans to challenge the validity of your C&P exam all the way up the food chain, okay? And I hope at some point disciplinary action comes from you because I'm sick of it. I'm sick and tired of terrible CNP examiners for mental health, okay? Because you're out there and you know who I'm talking about, okay? So, okay, so I'll get off my soapbox for a second there, but uh, your, your claim goes in, okay? You file for PTSD for the first time or you're filing for PTSD increase, okay? Um, you're going to get, chances are very likely you're going to have a compensation and pension exam ordered, okay? Now, there's two ways you're going to get a C&P exam for PTSD, okay? The first way is you're going to go see uh, somebody at the VA, okay? That is a doctor, either a a U.S. board certified psychologist, somebody who does therapy, um, or a psychiatrist, someone who's an MD, and who can prescribe mental health medications. That's a psychiatrist. Uh, One of those two is going to conduct the exam, okay? A psychologist or a psychiatrist. So the first round is it's by a VA doctor at a VA facility, okay? The second way you're going to get a C&P exam is by a private doctor at a private facility, okay? Now, there's about six... Uh, contract holders right now. The VA wrote multi-billion dollar multiple award contracts with private companies, okay? There's a few of them out there. I think there might even be, I think there's six right now. Uh, But what will happen is eventually that company is going to contact you by phone and by mail, okay? You should get some kind of a FedEx package uh, sent to your house, okay? So make sure your home address is updated properly inside of your e-benefits account, Uh, or va.gov once you file your claim, whether it's first time or increase, uh, because you're going to get scheduled for an exam, okay? So one of the contracted companies then will send you an information packet that explains you're going to see XYZ doctor at XYZ facility and XYZ date, okay? Um, And a little tip for you, research the doctor, Go to Google, type their name in, and see who you're going to see, all right? Find out what they're all about, read their reviews, um, and you need to remember their name, especially if you need to challenge the validity 
of the CNP exam results, okay? So two ways, you're either gonna have a CNP exam for PTSD at the VA, or you're gonna have a CNP exam for PTSD by a contracted company, all right, a civilian company at a private civilian doctor's office, okay? That's the most common that we see right now. Um, now, the good part, I think, about them writing these multi-billion dollar contracts at the VA and hiring private companies to do this, guys, is CNP examiners, or CNP exams, excuse me, are happening really, really fast, all right? Which is good news and maybe bad news too. Uh, in the past, you used to file your claim and you'd be waiting for a VA doctor at a VA facility. Well, there's only so many guys and there's millions of claims going in. So CNP exams for PTSD were being backlogged months, if not years, okay? Now you're gonna get called in for a compensation and pension exam quickly. Uh, I actually got called in for one within six days of filing for the claim, okay? We're seeing veterans, uh, again, we've helped 3,000 plus to date inside of our VA Claims Insider Elite program, okay, which I welcome you to join for free today. We've got over $7,500 worth of bonuses for the whopping price of $0, okay, guys? High value stuff that we're sharing with you guys as fellow veterans. Uh, one of my me team members will post the link here in the box, but you can also go to VA Claims insiderelite.com, okay? Um, all right, so you file your claim, you get called in, CNP exam in one to two weeks, okay? So you need to be prepared. If you're gonna file your disability claim for PTSD, you gotta be ready because you could get your CNP exam in four, five, six, seven days, uh, maybe two to three weeks, okay? So you gotta be ready for that, guys. Um, now, CNP exams for PTSD, what do you really need to know and what do you need to be uh, thinking about, okay? There's a few tips that I wanna share with you, uh, but remember these three things, okay? In order to even be eligible for VA disability compensation under federal law, you have to meet three things, okay? Number one, you must have a medical diagnosis of PTSD, and that needs to be in a medical record, okay? So that could be in your service treatment records, that could be in, in uh, VA records. So if you're currently seeking treatment at the VA, um, you can be in those records. It can also be in any private medical records. Now, I know that very commonly uh, veterans don't trust the VA, okay? And I get it. You don't trust VA doctors. So maybe you're seeking treatment at an outside facility, okay? The other thing is the new VA Mission Act, all right, you've got options potentially uh, to see outside facilities for treatment, okay, which I recommend you do. A um, couple things I want to address, though, about those that first part, the medical diagnosis, okay? It's absolutely crucial. Guys, if you don't have a medical diagnosis for PTSD in a medical record and you file a VA vis a disability claim for it, I can 100% guarantee you that that claim is gonna be denied. It isn't even gonna go on to step two. Okay, so if you're hearing my voice right now and you think you might have post-traumatic stress disorder, regardless of what might have caused it, get your butt to the doctor. Okay, guys, two reasons why I'm telling you to do that. Number one, I want you to get help. I want you to talk to somebody finally after all these years about your mental health condition. Okay, so that's the bottom line bar none. You gotta get help, okay? It helps to talk about these things, even if it's uncomfortable. Okay, the second reason why I want you to pick up the phone and call the VA mental health facility near you and get booked for an appointment is because you have to document your record, okay? If you file a VA claim and the medical evidence isn't there for PTSD, no diagnosis, you haven't been in treatment for years, you're not taking medications, you're not honest and vulnerable about your symptoms, one of two things is gonna happen. You're either gonna get denied, okay, outright, or you're gonna get lowballed in your rating because there's not gonna be enough medical evidence for the VA rater, the RVSR, to make a decision, okay? So if you're hearing my voice, get to the doctor, okay? So that's number one, you gotta have a medical diagnosis. Um, and then number two, okay, so if you have a medical diagnosis in number one, then it goes on to number two of the law, okay? And that is, 
is your PTSD, was it caused or made worse by your active duty military service? Okay, if the answer to that question is not clear or no, the VA is going to deny the claim and they're going to say not service connected. So if you've ever seen those things inside of your e-benefits account, whether it's for PTSD or another disability, that's what that means. The VA doesn't think that your PTSD was caused or made worse by your active duty service. Okay, guys, now uh, a couple tips there on the nexus. Especially crucial if you were not diagnosed with PTSD while on active duty. Okay, guys, a lot of the veterans we serve um, never went to the doctor. Heck, in the 70s and 80s, we weren't really sure what PTSD was, okay? We didn't understand it medically the way that we do today. And there's all kinds of reasons why fellow veterans like you and me don't go to the doctor on active duty. We're not honest about it. We're not honest about our symptoms because we're worried that we're going to get kicked out of the military. We're worried we're going to lose our security clearance. We're worried that, heaven forbid, your boss finds out and you get put on uh, you know, some kind of a profile because you're nuts, okay? Um, we're not. While you're on active duty wearing the uniform, we don't go to the doctor when we should, and we're not honest about our symptoms, especially when it comes to mental health, okay? So chances are, guys, you were not diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder while you were on active duty, okay? So here we are years later, and you're finally willing to be honest, okay? Maybe you've, you've been through divorces, you're having major issues in relationships, your sex life is gone, you're depressed, you've got anxiety and panic attacks, you're not sleeping well, okay? Those are all very common symptoms of a mental health condition, especially post-traumatic stress disorder. So here we are, five years, 20 years, 40 years later, you're finally honest about your post-traumatic stress disorder and you go to file your claim, okay? You have to prove on an at least as likely as not basis, which means a 50-50 chance, um, that your PTSD was caused or made worse by your active duty service. And if it's been years, it gets harder to close the nexus gap, okay? All a nexus means, guys, is that there's a logical link or connection between an in-service incident or incident and something today, right? Something you're suffering from today like the PTSD. That's all a nexus means. So for post-traumatic stress disorder, you need to be concerned about what is or was the event that caused or made your PTSD worse? Was it a combat deployment? Okay. Was it a military sexual harassment or sexual assault situation, like an MST? Was it a hurricane? Was it a motor vehicle accident? Was it a rape? Was it something you witnessed? Another soldier killed? Somebody captured? Okay. There's all kinds of things, whether it's PTSD combat or PTSD non-combat, that are eligible for VA disability benefits under the law. But you have to be very concerned about the stressors. Okay, now I've got another video here on YouTube that talks uh, specifically about PTSD non-combat claims and how to prove your stressors. Okay, so if you've ever been denied before or the VA can't verify the stressor, I highly recommend that you watch that video because I talk about it in detail. Okay, um, okay so PTSD combat is anything where you directly engage in combat with the enemy or things like indirect fire, rockets, mortars, suicide bombers, stuff like that, um, the threat or hostility, okay? Um, but a key thing, guys, with post-traumatic stress disorder is did you fear for your life? Yes or no, okay? Um, and so when I say that, what I want you to think about is when you're writing your personal statement, Okay, the VA Form 21-4138, the statement in support of a claim, okay? You need to talk specifically about the in-service incidents or stressful events that you believe caused or made your PTSD worse, okay? 
And you need to tell the VA and the Raider who's going to be reading that personal statement why you believe that to be true, okay? This is why this incident caused my PTSD, right? I feared for my life. I feared for my life. I thought I was going to die, okay, if that's, if that's the truth. Um, and you got to be vulnerable, Okay, so once you talk about that in your personal statement, make sure you're talking about your symptoms. All the things you have going on with you right now, don't hold back. Okay, you got to have a personal statement to help support that nexus, okay? Um, All right, so that's the second part is the nexus. The third part is severity of symptoms, okay? How severe are your post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms today? Okay, the compensation and pension exam for PTSD is a snapshot in time, okay? It's how you're doing on that particular day. Bottom line, bar none, C&P exams for PTSD come down to one thing. Your current level of occupational and social impairment, okay? Occupational impairment meaning how is your PTSD affecting your work? That's occupational, And then your social impairment is your life, your functioning, your relationships, okay? That's what it comes down to, guys. And I think you need to be very familiar heading into your CNP exam for PTSD. You need to be very familiar with ECFR, Title 38, Part 4, the Schedule for Rating Disabilities, okay? Take a look at the mental health rating criteria, Okay, PTSD claims and all mental health claims are rated on a 0 to 100% scale. 0 meaning you might have a diagnosis, but you've got no symptoms, none. Versus the 100% level talks about total occupational and social impairment, delusional thoughts, hallucinations. You can't take care of yourself, okay, without help. It's very, very severe at the 100% level. We see a lot of veterans at the 70% level for PTSD, which is occupational and social impairment uh, with deficiencies in work, life, and social functioning, okay? That's what that 70% level means. That's what it talks about. So take a look, though, at all the symptoms under ECFR Title 38 Part 4, the Schedule for Rating Disabilities for Mental Health Conditions. Go look at the symptoms at the 50 and 70% level. You're gonna see things like panic attacks more than once a week, panic attacks more than three times a week, major depression, anxiety, difficulty with memory, right? Short-term and long-term memory loss, trouble in relationships, work issues, okay? So when you're writing your personal statement, take a look and focus on those keywords of how your PTSD is limiting or affecting your life And explain it in your personal statement, guys, in one to two paragraphs. That's all it needs to be. One to two paragraphs is all that it needs to be, okay? So those three things. Medical diagnosis of PTSD, if you don't have one, get your butt to the doctor and go get it. Second thing, is your PTSD due to your service? Okay, was it caused or made worse by your active duty service? Third thing, severity of symptoms. How severe are your PTSD symptoms today? How are they limiting or affecting your life? Be very concerned about your current level of occupational and social impairment. Okay? All right, so prep for your CMP exam. We talked about you're going to get one. Okay? When you file a new claim or an increase, you're going to get a CMP exam. It's either going to happen by a VA psychologist or psychiatrist at a VA facility, or most likely it's going to happen by a contracted CMP exam uh, at a private facility. Okay? The CNP exam, number one most important day in your entire VA disability claims process, especially for post-traumatic stress disorder. Why do I say this, guys? Because here's the deal. I don't care who tells you different. I don't care what the credentials are of the doctor. Okay, People are lying to you when they say this. We are seeing that our VSRs, the rating veteran service rep at the VA are relying almost 100% of the time on the opinions of your CNP examiner. 
okay? So guys, man, if you get a crappy CNP examiner, you get somebody who's out to get you, you get somebody who doesn't believe in the disability compensation, you get somebody who is not veteran friendly, you're gonna get screwed. I'm telling you right now, you're gonna get screwed, you're gonna get lowballed if you get a bad CNP examiner for PTSD or mental health, and you need to challenge it, okay? We've been very successful at helping veterans write memorandum for records, uploading to your eBenefits or VA.gov account, calling 1-800-827-1000, speaking to a rep and complaining about your CNP exam, um, and you'll get a new one. We're seeing veterans get a new one. Now, if you've already been denied and you're within that one-year window of appeal and you think you had a bad CNP examiner for PTSD, uh, one of the things you should do is do a higher level review. Okay, it's the first step of the appeals process. You're gonna get to have an informal conference with a DRO, a decision review officer on the phone. Yes, you're finally gonna get to talk to somebody at the VA. Um, and you're gonna be able to explain to that DRO why you got screwed in your CNP exam and why the doctor was out to get you, okay? So I highly recommend you do that if you've been denied and you're within that one year window of appeal, okay? Um, CMP exams though, bottom line, bar none, number one most important day in your entire claims process, especially for the mental health and PTSD, because the Raiders are relying on the CMP examiner's results almost 100% of the time, okay? Uh, which I think is very sad that they're not considering more of the evidence in the record, um, but it is what it is. That's, that's just what we're seeing. So you have to be prepared, guys, okay? Um, okay. Prep, so actually showing up. Get to your CNP exam for PTSD early, okay? Be there at least 15 minutes early. I recommend 30 minutes early. Why do I say this? Because when you get there, remember, you're one of probably 10 or 15 compensation and pension exams that that particular doctor, psychologist or psychiatrist, is doing on any one day. So give yourself some time to get there Get there early, make sure you've got your ID with you. Check in at the counter. Chances are they're going to hand you some paperwork, okay? The nurse or uh, the, uh, the secretary is gonna hand you a clipboard with some sheet sheets of paper, and they're gonna say, here you go, you know, please fill this stuff out, complete it, um, and hand it back to me when you're done. Chances are very likely they are gonna give you something called the PCL-5. Okay, what that is, guys, is it's a 20-question self-exam test that you're going to take. 20 questions rated from 0 to 4 in severity asking you about your current symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. That's what that is. The PCL-5 is an approved 20-question self-exam most often given at the CNP exam by CNP examiners, you fill it out, okay? And you're telling the doctor then how severe your PTSD symptoms are on that day. Okay, now the PC PCL-5, um, again, 20 questions. It's only valid, according to the research, within about a 30-day window, okay? So when you complete it at your CNP exam, that is your moment in time where you're telling the VA and the VA Raider how severe your post-traumatic symptom, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms are on that day. Okay, now the PCL-5, all right, it's uh, new. It's new in the last few years when the VA switched to the DSM-5, okay? The Diagnostic Manual for Mental Health Dis Disorders 5. We used to be in DSM-4. We're not in DSM-4 anymore. We're in DSM-5, okay? Uh, some CNP examiners use something called the CAPS-5, okay? That stands for Clinician Administered PTSD Scale Test, the CAPS-5. That's more lengthy. It's more forensic in nature. Um, a lot of CNP examiners prefer to do that, but most of them can't because it takes a long time to administer, okay? So most don't have time to do it. So chances are you're just going to get the P uh, PCL-5, which is that 20-question self-assessment. Now, there's versions of the PCL-5, okay? There's something called PCL-5 with LEC-5, L-E-C, talking about life events. 
Um, and then there's something called PCL5 with LEC5 with Criterion A. Okay, I'm going to give you all these checklists, by the way. Okay, which I also have them when you join us inside VA Claims Insider Elite. Okay, if you want these checklists, so you know the questions that are going to be asked from you before your VA CNP exam, get your butt inside of our Elite program. That is what we do, guys. We've devoted our lives to helping you. You can go to VA Claims Insider Elite.com and complete our three step intake. Okay, guys, especially crucial for mental health ratings, PTSD ratings, because PTSD mental health claims are high value claims, meaning there's a very high likelihood that you're going to get a 30% rating or higher for mental health. Okay. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the PCL5. Um, and what, are, what is the VA rater, what is the VA CNP examiner looking for, okay? You're going to get a provisional PTSD diagnosis depending on how your CNP exam goes, even if you've already got one, okay? The, the CNP examiner should confirm previous diagnosis. It's an 80-point score. Zero to 80 is how the PCL5 is scored. Now, research suggests... And the VA's recommendation is that it takes a score of 33, okay, in order, uh, that's basically the, the minimum PTSD threshold cutoff score is a 33, okay. Um, according to the VA, you're also supposed to have a yes in at least one category B question, at least one category C question, two category D questions and two category E questions, okay, which again, this is a PTSD self-assessment, okay, this is your chance prior to walking into your CNP exam for PTSD to tell the rater how severe your symptoms are on that particular day, okay, now once you circle those, so it's again, each question, 20 questions is scored in a zero to four, zero is none at all, four is extremely, Okay, and it's going to say things like, you know, uh, difficulties uh, falling asleep or staying asleep. Not at all, extremely. Okay, it's got a whole bunch of other questions, though, about your symptoms, which again, will tell the CNP examiner and the VA rater just how severe your mental health symptoms are. Okay, again, that 30-day window uh, is very, very important. Okay, guys, so PCL5, that's why you need to get there early. Okay, you need to get to your CNP exam for PTSD early so you can fill out the PCL5. It's going to take you, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes to fill it out thoughtfully. Um, and you might get even more checklists than that. You might get the PCL5 with LEC5. You might get something with Criterion A where the VA CNP examiner or the contracted CNP examiner wants to know your stressful events. Okay, what is the event or the moment in time? that caused or made your PTSD worse, okay? Remember, PTSD can also be rated if you already had PTSD prior to service, but your service aggravated it, okay? That's okay. Um, but I think you need to be very concerned if you had pre-existing PTSD, um, what it's tied to, okay? Uh, was your PTSD due to a death was it due to something that happened to you, like a sexual assault trauma before you entered the military? When you file for PTSD, then if you're going to claim aggravation, meaning the military made it worse, you already had it, but the military made it worse, you need to be very clear and specific about what event made your PTSD worse and the severity of your symptoms prior to service and the severity of symptoms after the event, okay? Okay. Remember, we've talked about buddy letters and personal statements. Absolutely crucial. If medical evidence is lacking at all, guys, have a spouse, a buddy, someone who served with you, a firsthand witness, somebody who's over 18 years of age or older, who can shed some light on just how severe your PTSD symptoms are, what they witness. Hey, I work with John. I know he gets aggravated. He's depressed all the time. He's sometimes late for work. I know he's got severe anxiety. He's afraid to go outside with us, right? He doesn't like to be in crowds. You got to have somebody else who can help verify and validate just how severe your symptoms are and how 
your PTSD is limiting or affecting your life. Okay, that's what a buddy statement is. Um, but by the way, when you write a personal statement or when you write or get a buddy letter, all that is, guys, is it's something called lay evidence. Lay evidence is nothing more than a fancy legal term for after the fact evidence. Okay, but in the absence of any medical information, buddy letters and personal statements help fill in the gaps. They help tell your true story. Okay, so make it count and talk about four things inside of those letters. The diagnosis, how you believe it's service-connected, your current symptoms, right? How is it limiting or affecting your life, your current level of occupational and social impairment, um, and then you sign and date your name. Okay, that's it. Those are the four things. doesn't need to be more than a couple pages long. Uh, you might even be able to do it in one page, okay? A uh, couple things, though, on your exam. So you filled out this PCL5. You've turned it back in. The doctor's going to get it. Hopefully, the doctor has already reviewed your entire C file. Okay, that's your VA claims file. That's everything that has ever been documented or done with your disability claim. Okay, the CNP examiner should have had access to that prior to your exam. Now, sometimes the CNP examiners lie to you. Sometimes they tell you they, they don't have anything or they've never looked at it, when in fact they actually have. Sometimes they'll tell you they have no idea who you are. And the reality is they've been Googling your name and searching social media, okay? Which is a bunch of BS, by the way, because looks can be deceiving, okay? I'm a prime example of that. Somebody could look at social media and go, yeah, you know, that guy's got it all together. He's got a company and he helps veterans. Well, what you don't see are those dark moments, what you don't see are those off-camera days where I'm too depressed to get out of bed. What you don't see are the days when I'm afraid to leave my own damn house, okay? Let's call it what it is. And so social media, uh, pictures, things like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, those things can be very deceiving, guys, about what's really going on inside of a veteran's brain. And so if you're a CNP examiner, I would caution you from ever making an assumption about a veteran based on outward appearances. Because guess what? You can easily hide the truth. We see it all the time. So um, anyway, though, so you go to see uh, the examiner. They should conduct a 30 to 60 minute interview. Now, most likely it's going to be something called a forensic evaluation. Now, don't be freaked out by the, the words forensic. All that means is they're asking you a series of questions. They're looking at the documentation they have, your PCL5 results. Remember that 20 question test you filled out? They're trying to determine diagnosis, nexus or nexus event, and then how severe your symptoms are. Those are those three things under the law. Okay, they're gonna ask you all kinds of questions. Tell me about where you were born. Tell me about uh, your work life history. Tell me about your education level. Um, tell me about your marriage situation. Do you have kids, right? The reason that they're asking you a lot of these questions, by the way, is they're trying to determine the approximate time frame of when your post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms began. Okay, so let me give you an example. Let's say that the doctor says, hey, tell me about your childhood. You know, were your parents married? Where did you grow up? What was it like in your household? Well, if you tell them that you were abused, as a child, right, your father beat you, your mother was an alcoholic, um, chances are they're gonna write in their notes, veteran had, you know, an abusive childhood to those incidents. Well, we know that that's crap, but again, you gotta be careful. Now, I'm not telling you to lie or stretch the truth. You have to be honest and vulnerable. But if that's the situation, if you had a rough childhood, you need to make sure you tell the CNP examiner that you did not have PTSD symptoms early on in life. You didn't have PTSD symptoms until after you joined the military, until I deployed to Iraq. I didn't have PTSD until I was in Vietnam, okay, even though I had a rough childhood. Um, so those, that's, again, some of the, the issues there with pre-existing issues. Okay? You need to be careful about some of those things and the traps that some of these garbage CNP examiners are doing to our veterans. It's wrong. Again, we're calling it out. We're calling it out. VA CNP examiners specifically suck. 
Now I'm going to name a facility right here, right now, who sucks the most. The VA in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay? VA in Cleveland, Ohio, you do- your doctors are screwing our veterans intentionally. And I'm calling it out right here, right now. The Cleveland, Ohio VA is the worst we've ever seen. Somebody needs to step in and take action and do something about it. Okay, and Cleveland, Ohio isn't the only one. There's more than that. Uh, but Ohio in particular sucks, specifically Cleveland. These doctors are absolutely atrocious. Makes me so angry. Okay, I'll, I'll try to relax a little bit here now. I get, I get myself all spun up fighting for you guys. But that's what we do at VA Claims Insider, guys. We fight for you. We have devoted our get the VA disability rating and compensation they deserve. That is our mission. We are true to it every single day. Some of my team members are on this call right now. You can tell them flat out, is Brian Reese really real? Is he actually a real person? Is he really this passionate about veterans? And they'll tell you, hell yeah, he is. Hell yeah, he is. We bring it every single day, guys. And so do all of the members on our team unbelievable team of fellow disabled veterans we have at VA Claims Insider. Um, I'm so proud of all of you guys. I couldn't do this without you. Um, And thank you. Thank you guys. Some of them are on this call right now. Uh, But again, you need some help. You need more medical evidence. You need a DBQ for PTSD. You need an independent psych eval. You need a nexus letter. That's what we do. Okay? You can join us for free at VA Claims Insider Elite. Dot com. Okay, guys, again, $7,500 worth of bonuses, over 3,000 veterans served to date, a 91% success rate, the average increase of 30% in your rating, VA Claims, Insider, Elite.com. You can also check out our reviews on Google, uh, Facebook, ask around, um, lots of folks uh, who we've helped, guys, and we change their lives. That's what I'm so proud of, um, is we celebrate life change. Life change. Uh, actually, at the CNP exam. So we've talked about the PCL five, which you fill out before, um, and then in your interview with the doctor. Okay, never ever lie or stretch the truth, guys. It's illegal to do that. Don't feign symptoms. Don't malinger. I get it. Just be you. Okay. Now I've had some vets say, "Don't shower, right? For for two for a week. Um, you know, wear scrubby clothes." I, guys, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. And that, in my opinion, that goes along with lying and stretching the truth. Go in there dressed how you normally are on a normal day. Okay, a polo shirt, a t-shirt, workout clothes, whatever. Okay, um, shave, right? Some people say I don't shave, I'll mess up my hair. Look, I think that's ridiculous. All you need to be prepared to do is go in there and tell your true story cold. Okay, and two tips here. Do not have your best day. Okay, what does that mean? Folks with mental health conditions, especially PTSD, their symptoms go up and down. Okay, you might have a, a, be having a particularly good day. You might have, be having a particularly bad day. You need to act like you are on your very worst days. Tell the doctor how depressed you are. Tell them how much anxiety you have. Tell them what's happening at your work. I'm having memory problems. I just got divorced right? Um, I've been divorced multiple times. I've been abusing alcohol, drugs. Hey, I, you know, I've got a gambling addiction. Whatever it is, guys, you have to be uncomfortably vulnerable and tell the doctor everything going on with you, okay? Do not have your best day. Be uncomfortably vulnerable. Tell the doctor everything. Do not hold back, okay? You're never going to see this person again, okay? And you got the, the patient-client relationship there, Tell them what's going on, okay? Got to be vulnerable. All right, Um, let's see. We've talked about the PCL5. We've talked about the interview, right? The the VA examiner, whether it's at the VA or a private doctor, should conduct a 15 to uh, hour long assessment of you, um, asking you a whole bunch of questions. So be prepared to talk about your life and be prepared specifically to talk about your nexus statement. What was the event that caused or made your PTSD worse. Okay, you gotta really be thinking about that. Now, one other area I wanna touch on before we take a couple of questions here uh, is something called the veteran's own willful misconduct. Okay, write that word down. Willful 
misconduct. By VA law, okay, the VA is unable to grant service connection and rate a claim. This is especially true for uh, mental health issues, PTSD claims. If they determine that a veteran's own willful misconduct is what caused or made your PTSD worse. Okay, let me give you an example. We had a veteran uh, who was overseas in Korea who got mixed up in some drugs. Okay, there was some drug incidents happening. Um, It wasn't him, it was his roommate. Okay, but he was around it and he never reported the illegal drug issues that were happening with his roommate. Okay, well, one night uh, he got beat up pretty bad by the folks that this veteran was hanging around, hawking illegal drugs overseas. And he feared for his life, right? I mean, was literally beaten until, uh, I mean, he nearly lost his life from that incident. The VA denied the claim, stating that the veteran's cause of his PTSD was his own willful misconduct, okay, which is bogus, but he was around illegal drug activity that was never reported, okay? That's what that means, the veteran's own willful misconduct. The other thing to think about is alcohol and drugs, okay? Now, we know that alcohol abuse, alcoholism, is very commonly a coping mechanism that a veteran will turn to to try to deal with their PTSD symptoms, okay? Alcohol, drugs, gambling, sex, you name it, veterans, I mean, will do anything to try to make those symptoms go away. Be very careful that you don't give the CMP examiner or the VA rater any ammunition that your alcohol use or abuse or your drug use and abuse is the cause of your PTSD, okay? There's a huge difference there. Is your alcohol and drug issues, are those because of your PTSD, meaning you're trying to cope with your symptoms, or is it the reverse? Did your alcoholism and your drug abuse cause your PTSD? All right, if the VA determines that, guys, they'll likely deny the claim and say that it was the veteran's own willful misconduct that caused those things. Okay, now that's true for tobacco also. Right? If you've got a lung cancer that was caused by tobacco use, guess what? The VA is going to deny your claim and say it was the veteran's own willful misconduct, the smoking that led to your lung cancer. Okay? Same is true for alcohol, drugs, and things like that. Um, any illegal activities that a veteran might have been engaged with or didn't report that caused or made your PTSD worse. Okay? So be careful about that. All right. Now, what do I recommend? If you're filing a PTSD claim for the first time or you're filing for an increase, I highly, highly recommend you get your butt inside of VA Claims Insider Elite, our premier medical consulting program, so you can go through an independent psychological evaluation with a U.S. board certified psychologist, okay? Somebody who's authorized to make diagnosis, someone who can document your nexus statement for you inside of a disability benefit questionnaire, um, and somebody who can document the severity of your symptoms, okay? Get your butt inside of Elite. Okay, again, it's a free three-step intake. You can go to vaclaimsinsiderelite.com, and we can get you set up with an independent U.S. Board Certified Psychologist to get a DBQ, a disability benefit questionnaire for PTSD, Um, or other mental health conditions, okay? Absolutely crucial to show and prove to the CNP examiner and the VA rater diagnosis, diagnosis history, um, your nexus, what was your PTSD caused or made worse by? Combat, non-combat situation, um, or something else. And then what are your current severity of symptoms? Anxiety, depression, insomnia, anger issues, panic attacks, sexual dysfunction, hallucination, delusional thoughts. There's a whole laundry list of symptoms. Those symptoms are crucial, guys, because that's what corresponds directly to the rating criteria under the law. So if you're hearing my voice right now and you got a low ball rating, that's because the VA determined your symptoms aren't that severe. Okay, But if you believe your symptoms are now worse, get inside of Elite, do an independent psych eval, get a DBQ for PTSD review done, 
and prove to the VA how your symptoms are worse and meet the higher rating criteria under the law. Okay, again, you can go to VA Claims Insider Elite.com. All right, guys. All right, so we talked about some good, bad, ugly of CNP exams, CNP examiners, and CNP exams specifically for PTSD. Okay, mental health conditions, guys, are high value claims, meaning they have a very high likelihood of getting rated at 30% or higher. We talked about the three things medical diagnosis of PTSD, medical nexus. Uh, of your PTSD, how was it caused or made worse by your active duty service. We talked about symptoms, right? Remember, all mental health conditions are rated on a scale of 0 to 100%. Um, We talked about the PCL-5, that 20-question self-reported measure assessment you're going to take at your CNP exam for PTSD. We talked about why it's important, the minimum cutoff score of 33, right? At that uh, particular PCL-5 is scored from 0 to 80 on the scale. We talked about how you need to be uncomfortably vulnerable at your CNP exam. Talked about how you can't have your best day, how to write your personal statements, your buddy letters. Um, Last thing I want to talk about before I, I head out today, guys, is bring some of the documentation with you. Bring your personal statements, bring a DBQ, bring your Nexus letter, bring a buddy letter, even bring a spouse actually with you in person to your CNP exam for PTSD, okay? Now, don't force that crap on the doctor if they don't want it, but maybe they haven't actually seen those things. So what I would do is have them with you and you can ask the doctor if they would like to see them. Okay, if they want to see them, you can hand it to them. If not, leave it alone. Okay, I recommend that you don't force it, don't push it, okay? All right, guys, compensation pension exam, the number one most important day in your entire VA disability claims process. You must be prepared, guys. And by the way, we provide CNP exam coaching, okay, just like a job interview, okay? Who goes to a job interview not prepared, So why would you ever go to a CNP exam not prepared? You must be prepared, guys. And if you get a bad CNP exam, a crappy CNP examiner, you must be prepared to punch back. That's what we help you do. We help you fight against these illegal, immoral, and unethical CNP examiners because they're out there and you VA doctors are the worst. I'm calling you out right now, you VA doctors are the worst. You're doing the wrong thing and we are challenging it and I hope and pray that eventually there will be disciplinary action against you, okay? All right, guys. Brian Reese here, the VA Claims Insider, out from Austin, Texas. Love you guys. Please drop a comment below. Uh, Please like and share this video across YouTube and Facebook. We got to get this information out to more veterans, guys. That's why I'm asking for your help, all right? Okay, guys, if you need anything, feel free to shoot me a note at vaclaimsinsider.com. Thank you to my team members for you guys helping out. Uh, love you. I, couldn't, I could not do this. I could not serve veterans without you. Thank you guys so much. All right, we'll talk to you real soon.